Mzoai, there had been reports just several hours ago claiming that she unreservedly apologized for this. This is after President Cyril Ramaphosa is believed to have wrapped her over the knuckles, over the comments that she has made recently. Talk to us about the latest developments. Well, a very good evening to you, uh, the people and the viewers. And yeah, uh, I guess we are still trying to to understand what exactly is happening. Because a few hours ago, um, we had to run a statement that came from the president saying um, the minister has retracted her, her statement, you know, the, her attitude around uh, the attack on the judiciary. But uh, as you know, then came another statement, and then, of course, we had to verify because uh, it, uh, it, 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 it had been unsigned, but we had to verify with uh, people um, that worked for her, and uh, it was indeed confirmed that uh, it was a statement from her. So clearly now it puts the big question uh, to the presidency, and particularly the president. So who wrote that statement, and why was it not uh, checked with her? So I think this story is developing. It will be more interesting to see because uh, the NEC has just started. Um, remember, there is going to be the NEC and the NEC Lechotla. So you have the governing party meeting to look at various issues. And then you have two living figures already at each other's throat. Mm. What is also quite interesting, um, Zwai, is I'm sure you'd agree that it lends itself to the factional politics that arose as a result, not only of the statement, but the interpretation um, of, or rather the article, the opinion piece that she wrote, and um, the reactions to it. So what position does it put the presidency? Does it question the agenda of who ever put out that statement to say that she has apologized? You know, all this, um, uh, all what it does, the uh, Bisum, it is just confirming those divisions that we've been speaking about, that they are there for all to see in the governing party. After she wrote this article, um, we spoke, for example, to the NEC member, Tony Yengeni, you remember that interview that I conducted last week with Tony Yengeni, who came out supporting that uh, article fully. And then a few days later, I spoke to another NEC member, Ronald Lamola, who basically said this uh, was uncalled for. So here are people serving in one structure, uh, but reacting very differently to a statement uh, that is written by one of their own. So what is even more interesting and perhaps even intriguing is how will the president respond to this after in, his, in, in the official capacity of the presidency it was said um, he had a meeting with the minister where the minister unreservedly apologized and then a few hours later the minister said no, this is a misrepresentation. So clearly... We are waiting right now. We are waiting to hear from the president mm. um, what is the next cause of action because clearly, so he will have to act. I mean, we've tried to speak to to the, I mean, to the spokesperson to say what is the response. All they said was that, well, they've issued that statement. For now, the statement that they issued is the one that stands. So, so let's, let's talk about the NEC that is muting, as you mentioned, and see how they would be forced to frame not only these developments, but the conversation that has unfolded in the public arena thus far. Because what those who've complained about her article has been that it undermines not only her role as a cabinet minister, but she is indeed flouting uh, the parliamentary code of conduct that goes with that position, that she is undermining the constitution by the sentiments that she's expressing. Of course, she's hit back saying, that people have willfully misunderstood the conversation that she is raising, that uh, the judiciary is not only not beyond um, 
uh, sanction in terms of how it conducts its work, but the spirit of this within the South Africa's transitional dem democratic transition, the agenda thereof. I'm sorry, are you still with us? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Patrice, I couldn't hear you. Um, I, unfortunately, uh, the background noise. Uh, okay, just, so just, uh, just, uh, I can't hear you at all. I was asking, can you hear us now? Okay, that's, that's, that's better now. So what, what was the question? So the question was around the conversation that the NEC would be having, how they would frame these current developments and yep. the conversation that's been in the public arena around her role as a cabinet minister in line with the parliamentary code of conduct, but also the aspersions she is seemingly casting on uh, the judiciary with her writ? I think what, what's going to happen uh, really at uh, this so is, is what we've been witnessing in the past few days where different factions will come depending on which faction you, faction you belong to. Those uh, who perhaps would be uh, known as RITs, they will come in full support of what she's written. But of course those who may be opposed to that so we'll obviously come and blast uh, the, the statement that she has made. So all of this is basically uh, about 2022 December elective conference. Yes, uh, it's not out there in, uh, formally, but we already know that this is now the jostling, this is the mobilization, and then people are trying to win the hearts and minds of the structures as we go to the elective conference uh, in December. So we are going to see a lot of this at uh, so, um, so this kind of argument, uh, this kind of, uh, of fight. But what perhaps the unfortunate situation or the interesting situation, maybe let me put it that way, is she happens to be a cabinet minister, and then she happens to serve under the president, and then having these kind of utterances, even though she was uttering them as the ANC or in personal capacity, the fact of the matter is that she's the Minister of State, and the President has issued a statement which suggests he doesn't like it, but he, she rebuts this. So what is the President going to do? That is mm. the question. So, Mzai, so you say it's certainly at the centre of this, uh, the elective Congress. There have been rumours for the past several weeks of a possible cabinet reshuffle. Would this be an opportunity for the president if the potato gets too hot, too hot to handle, so to speak? Um, yes. Linda Sisulu has said people are deliberately misunderstanding her. She's talking about transformative justice for the people of South Africa, speaking out against stomach politics. Mm -hmm. But who is standing? in her corner, who has the clout to prevent a possible axing from her position? You know, I think at the moment, uh, the president is caught between the rock and a hard place. I'll tell you why. Number one, experience teaches us that uh, around this time in the climate of politics in the governing party, um, you fire her now, chances are the mobilization and the momentum could simply pick up because she could be seen as a victim. But at the same time, you are the president of the country. So these are the things that you have made clear that uh, you are against them. So what do you do? So do you calculate the political risks or you act as the head of state? So it is going to be very interesting to see what the president is going to do. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Mzwai uh, Mzandile Mbeche, SABC political editor, of course, will continue uh, with developments around the story. South Africa's tourism minister, Lindy Wesesulu, saying that uh, she has not unreservedly apologized to President Cyril Ramaphosa over her comments on the judiciary, as has been reported.